What if everything you've been told your whole life about your health was a lie? Since the time you were brought into this world, if you didn't feel good, if you had an earache, upset stomach, sinus problems, a cold, you were given medication. The people that cared for you, the people that loved you the most, gave you medicine to try to make you feel better. You were taught that drugs make you well. That is a lie. Then you got a little older. Now when you don't feel good, you have symptoms of some kind. The people that you love the most take you to the person they respect the most, the doctor in his long white coat who gives you a drug. You were taught that doctors heal you. That is a lie. In addition, by the time you're 18 years old, you've seen an average of over 20,000 hours worth of drug commercials. If you were told over 20,000 times that you were stupid, you'd probably start to think you were stupid. You have been conditioned to believe that health comes from a pill, potion, or lotion. That is a lie. Your whole life you've been indoctrinated into believing that health is based off of how you feel. That's a lie. I mean, how do you spell relief, right? Let's look at symptoms for a minute. You put your hand on a hot stove. In just a few minutes, you're probably going to get a, a quick, sharp pain, right? Well now, is that a good symptom or a bad symptom? Of course it hurts and nobody wants to be in pain, but the pain is there to protect you. It's there to say, hey dummy, move your hand. If it didn't hurt and if it didn't hurt bad, you might just leave your hand there and wind up pulling back a nub. Have you ever had that dream car? You know, the one you lay in bed at night just fantasizing, you're driving down some country road with the windows down. Maybe it's a uh, Mercedes or a BMW or a Rolls Royce or a sports car like a Lamborghini. Well, in this case, let's imagine it's a brand new Ferrari, okay? You've been saving up your whole life for this dream car. And so you go to the dealership and you pick out the color you want and it got that nice sports car feel, the leather interior. You drive it off the lot, you can still smell that new car smell. All of a sudden, the engine light comes on. Don't know exactly what that means, but we know it's not good, right, when the engine light comes on. So you're probably gonna take your brand new Ferrari down to a guy on the corner of the mechanic down there at the five and dime shop. Yeah, probably not. So you're probably gonna take your brand new Ferrari to the specialist, right? The guy who knows more about Ferraris than anyone. The head mechanic at the dealership. So what happens? You pull in the dealership, head mechanic comes out, looks in the window, looks at the engine light and says, ha, I got just the thing, I'll be right back. So he takes off, comes back, little can of spray paint and shh, sprays over the engine light and the engine light's gone. So it must be okay, right? I mean, now there's no engine light. So what happens? You get back in your brand new Ferrari, you're driving down the road, eventually you're gonna have a bigger problem. Not exactly sure what, but something a lot bigger than just an engine light. Something's gonna break down. So imagine if you have a headache and you take a Tylenol. You realize that all you're doing is just spraying over that headache. You're just covering up the pain, right? I mean. You don't really believe that headaches come from a Tylenol deficiency, do you? No one has had a drug deficiency that has ever caused their health problems. So taking medication has never fixed their problem. I mean, asthma does not come from an Advair deficiency. Nerve pain is not caused by a lack of neurotin in your system. Inability to sleep isn't because you have a shortage of Ambien. Allergies are not the result of Claritin in your system and pain doesn't come from a lack of Oxycontin or Oxycodone or any of the other Oxys. So taking medication never fixes anything. It never addresses the cause of the ailment. It just temporarily masks it while you get sicker. Let's look at migraines for an example. Most of us know people that have had migraines. Research has discovered that 80% of long-term migraine sufferers will have a stroke. Eight out of 10 is not good odds if you've had migraines for a while. But it makes sense when you understand the mechanism of a migraine. So what happens is your brain decides, hey, I need more food, I need more blood, right? So it sends a message down the heart. The heart pumps a little bit harder, pushing the blood up against gravity through the blood vessels to the brain. Now, if the blood vessels don't get the message to open up and to dilate, to allow proper blood flow or more blood flow, then you're trying to squeeze a lot of blood through a small opening and those blood vessels then get inflamed, they get irritated, and that's where a lot of the pain comes from. And then you end up with a lack of blood flow to the brain. Well, if you cut off the blood flow to the brain long enough, that part of the brain could starve to death, which is the mechanism of a stroke. Now, from an upper cervical chiropractic standpoint, this is a real simple situation. We just make sure that all the communication to the blood vessels is opened up, 
then the blood vessels do like they're supposed to. They dilate, allow proper blood flow to the brain, preventing the migraine, the pain, and the potential of the stroke down the road. Let's look at the causes of death in the United States. The CDC every year, Center for Disease Control, ranks the overall cause of death in the U.S. The number one cause of death in the U.S. today is heart disease. What does heart disease feel like? You know, 50% of the time, the very first symptom of heart disease is death. I mean, do you really want to wait for the symptom? Stroke is the number two cause of death in the United States. What does a stroke feel like? Well, the first symptom of a stroke is stroke. You don't want to wait for the symptom. The third leading cause of death in the U.S. is cancer. What does cancer feel like? You don't feel anything while it's growing inside of you. It's not until it gets big enough to where it can start affecting tissues and organs around it that you actually start to have symptoms. It's not even visible on the x-ray for up to 10 years. How many people ever go to the medical doctor when they feel good? If you did, what would they do for you? Weigh you? Measure you? Seeing if you've grown any since last visit? If you don't have symptoms, there's really not much they can do for you. The entire medical system is totally based off of how you feel, off of symptoms. So it isn't really a healthcare system at all. It's actually a disease care or a crisis care system. They don't care for your health. They treat your symptoms while your health declines. Quit chasing symptoms just to get a temporary cover up with medication. You are the best doctor. You have everything you need inside of you to heal yourself. Your body doesn't need any help. It just can't be interfered with. Well, upper circle with chiropractors to check to see if there's anything interfering with your God-given ability to heal. And if there is, they can remove it and allow the power that made your body heal your body. Find an upper cervical doctor near you today.